with you. Um, I've got Jam here with me. How are you doing, Jam? All right, mate. Not too bad, how are you? Yeah, good, mate. So, the second Iron Maiden track has been released today. It's not been dropped. Don't like dropped. You know that, don't you? I don't like that saying. It's been released. So, for areas. Um, yep. And it's called, well, hopefully, I can pronounce this, Stratego, would you say? Yes, I might say that, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> But um, I'm not sure if they actually say it in the song, so I don't know if that's the right uh, pronunciation. I don't think they do. So when the first track uh, came out, we had a little chat about that, didn't we? Because just to let everyone know out there, we do this because copyright slammed me on the first one. I did a reaction. I couldn't upload it. So the next best thing, got a jam on. Huge Iron Maiden fan like myself. Um, so we could just chat about it because we've got to do something on it. So this is a big thing, isn't it? Also, I don't know if you I don't know if you know this, Jam. Did you know that they don't usually release a second song leading up to the album coming out? Lately, they no. Haven't. I mean, it, yeah, I can imagine. I think it's a new thing to do, isn't it, for bands? That they know they don't make any money on single sales anymore, so there doesn't mm. seem to be any point in doing it. So it seems to be the way forward. I'm sure they've got a very clever marketing team who've uh, who've mm. told them this is the way forward. I guess, but yes, it's good to hear another song before the album. Yeah, I mean, it's not long before the album. Obviously, that's in what. Looking at a couple another, of weeks, another, two weeks couple, Friday, I think. Yeah, yeah two weeks Friday. So, I mean, I was starting to think to myself, they're releasing it for a reason. I know not. I, I know they don't give a shit what. Well, they probably do give a shit what the fans do, but do they? Are they reading into what the fans are saying about the the first single? Because the first single, writing on the wall, it's got a bit, bit of a mixed reception, didn't it? I mean, if you read some of the social media sites and under the actual uh, YouTube video itself. It's mixed, mainly positive, I'd say, but mixed. And most of that mixture is, uh, most of the negative stuff is about what we miss about the old Iron Maiden. And that's what most people who look at Maiden now negatively say about, we miss the old Iron Maiden. And I started to think to myself, has this single got anything to do, this new one, with that? Because it's sort of, a, it's sort of an answer to that. Would you, would you agree? Oh, definitely. This is definitely more like the old, well, I say the old, but the new I, the new old Iron Maiden, if you like. It's definitely <laughs> more upbeat song than, than the last one. Yeah. Um, so maybe, yeah, I mean, as, if anybody's track list is out there and the, the length of the songs is for everyone to see, and this is one of the shorter ones on there, so you knew it wasn't going to be probably a epic, more epic, ballady one, you know, sort of mm. mellowy one. It was going to be a faster-paced song. Oh, for sure. So... Let's have a little, because I've written a few things down here, because what well, Jam's listened to this song, how many times you listen to it? Three or four? Four, four now, four now. I've listened to it three times, once on YouTube. No, sorry, twice on YouTube, once on Spotify. So um, this versus, the, can you put it versus the first track? Could you, can you put it as a, what's the better track? Or is it so different that it's hard to do that? What do you prefer? Well, um, I was going to say this. I, I, I absolutely love writing on the wall now. I, it's really, really grown on me. It, it, I, every time it comes on, I whack the radio up now. Uh, I've got it. I've got it on the uh, iTunes and all that. And I play it. You know, I've played regularly over the last few weeks, and I, I think it's absolutely brilliant. Definitely a grower. This one, I think, is probably more immediate. I think if people mm. didn't like the first one, they perhaps like this one a bit more because it is a faster song. It's back to the galloping beats. Um, I mean, for me, the writing of the walls are more of an original, different song for Iron Maiden. So I think, in a way, that's better. But I mean, it's hard to judge when not heard this so many times. I mean, I think they're both, they're almost opposite scales. And I guess in between, both, the whole album is going to be like bits of both, I guess, something like that. But I think it's a definitely two, I think they're next to each other on the actual track list as well. So I think this is track two. I yes. think right on the wall with track three. So uh, interesting. We're, we're getting the start of the album. But certainly, if these two are anything to go by, it's going to be a great album. More, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I try to do a ver like verses, which one's the better. I, I can't really make my mind up because, and it's hard, isn't it? Like, writing on the wall, you say, has been with us a few times. I probably listen to writing on the wall only about five times, I reckon, not even that. So this is, I've listened to this three times. So I, I tend not to listen to things too much before the album comes out because I wanted to hear it together because I don't like yeah. being bored of a track before the rest of the album, if that makes any sense. I want to listen to it all fresh. But um, I like them both. Like you said, there's a lot of difference. 
in both as well. Let me quick say a quick one, because I know you haven't got Spotify, have you? But the difference, and I remember hearing writing on the wall and saying that the sound of it wasn't that good. And someone said, listen on Spotify. I've actually listened to writing on the wall on Spotify and it was a, a difference. Yeah. There's a difference there. And there's also obviously a difference with this one. I just listened to this on both next to each other and straight away, I could hear a difference in the YouTube and the Spotify version. Just the sound yeah. quality. That's all. It's just, but, I mean, to tell you the truth, we spoke about production. Well, I did mainly, I suppose you, you as well, but on the last track and the production in Iron Maiden Records over the last, probably since um, Dance of Death for me have been not what I want to hear production wise, mix wise. It sort of doesn't change really for me. I, I wish they'd, they'd bring some, someone else in or at least change something about it. I'm not saying it's the worst production in the world, but I don't want to spend ages talking about it because I've already done that on the other video. But um, I just wish that it was a lot more sharper for me. A bit like Brave New World. Remember that come out? That was yeah. a real sharp sort of production. But it's still not the worst production in the world. Um, you said about the gallop. The gallop's back. A little bit of gallop a gallop there. Yeah. Um, what I did like about this, and I've written down gallop straight away. That's my first I put up tempo and gallop straight away. Steve Harris's bass, I could hear that. Yeah, you can definitely hear that in there straight away because you you got the sort of the chords are sort of opening up and you can hear his bass before the before the guitar start galloping. You can hear that gallop from Steve Harris quite clearly and got a totally different sound to his bass than either any other bass player. It's it's, it's a bit weird. <laughs> I don't know if you notice this as well, I've written down, and they do this quite a bit on some of their songs now, the melody, the guitar melody follows the vocal line. I uh, that exact written down, exactly that written down. How do you read a madman's mind? Teach me the art of war. I don't know, I was going to say, I don't know who does it. Is it Yannick who does that or is that Adrian? I'm not sure. But yeah, it, sure. Follows, it follows his, Bruce's vocal tone, doesn't it, all the way through? Yeah. Some I mean, the, the, I remember the... Uh, uh, it's probably happened loads of times, but the first time I noticed this was on the last album, on the red and the black. It totally followed the vocal line all the way through, and it does that. It's probably not as clear on this one as it is on red and the black. That is totally like you can hear it all the way through. But if you listen carefully, you can hear that guitar. Well, we both did, didn't we? Written down the yeah. same thing, following the vocal line. I don't mind it. It's okay. But in this song, it's, it's quite good because the guitar isn't too prominent. You can sort of hear it in the yeah. background. Um, but interesting that they do that a little bit now. Um, I love the way that it comes in and out of the gallop. So you've got the calls, and then it makes the gallop even more prominent when it goes back into the... Tick, 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 tick. I, I yeah. really like that. I don't know if you've noticed this, but I loved it. The keyboards used really in the chorus. You can hear them sort of quite high keyboard sounds and you can hear them coming in and out. It's not like it's like, you know, really prominent, but I quite think that's a cool touch. I don't know about you. Um, yeah, I mean, I was going to mention something about the keyboards at the end. I mean, well, it doesn't matter if we talk about the end now, does it? But um, yeah, this is quite, it's quite prominent right at the end of the song, just before yeah. the, the outro, um, mm. at which I'm, well, I'm not sure about that bit. That's the only bit of the song I'm not sure about because there's no guitars going there. It's just, well, from what I heard on YouTube, it would say it's possible it mm. might be better. But yeah, it's quite prominent at the end, certainly. That's what I noticed it the most. Yeah, it's through the chorus and obviously at the end as well. And I did notice it at the end as well. Yeah, but that, it's quite a cool touch. But I mean, I'm not, I don't think, you know, I remember when Maiden first used keyboards way back in, you know, 86, cat the time, yeah. whatever it is. And um, I remember not being happy back then, but I was a kid. But I don't really care now that they want to experiment with keyboards. That shit don't bother me. I listen to bands of keyboards all the time now. I just remember being in British back in the 80s and any band used keyboards is like what the fuck is that you know yeah um, <laughs> not not anymore i'm not like that anymore um i think that in general and i, I actually listened to a slight bit of writings on the wall because it came on on the spotify because uh, they're together the tracks you listen to the new track and then writing on the wall comes on afterwards when you listen to the spotify the drum the drums are quite prominent don't you think on these two tracks they're quite heavy sounding the snare drum especially you can hear it quite loud um, I, I was trying to think if it's like that on the last album, 
but I couldn't really. No, I, I think well, so go back to the. I always thought Nico's drum sound was is it always been a little bit thin, even back in the day on some some of the albums. I mean, if you got, I mean, I've got lucky enough to have quite high. I can listen to higher spec music files than than MP than than WAV files, if you like. They're like called a uh, the big. What they call they're big like music files. So every file is like twenty gig, so you can hear or oh, twenty meg, so you can hear each song in detail. I can stream it to my stereo, so I've got these high definition versions of all the Iron Maiden albums, expecting the drums and that to come through a little bit better in the bass, but they still don't really. And this is when obviously um, uh, Martin Birch was producing it, so I've always thought the drums have always been not quite as good as some other bands have had the drums, but uh, yes, they do seem to be quite prominent on this new one. The, well, the whole bass thing with Steve and Steve Nico driving this song all, all the way mm. through, I think it's pretty good. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the length of the song, I was going to mention that, but you've sort of talked about that nearly five minutes, four minutes, 59 seconds I've got. So yeah. obviously you wasn't going to get that, like you said, that big progressive repeating chorus 10 times business in this and you didn't actually get that on writings on the wall even though that was a six minute something song so the signs are at the moment and that seems that was a big bugbear i think of a lot of maiden fans was the repetitive choruses over the last few albums and it's just a bit yeah. too much they haven't got that yet not on these two no. songs this, this this doesn't really have a chorus. Well, it sort of has, but I couldn't, I couldn't remember. How, I've heard it four times. I don't know how it goes. It's got a lot of pre-choruses and pre precursor bits, doesn't it? There's one mm. bit that I thought sounded a bit like um, some of the clairvoyant. Time to live, time mm. to die. That sort of, there's a little bit of that in there, that, that sort of sound mm. we, I picked up early in the song. But, um, yeah, certainly not not one. Um, it's not got the sing-along chorus like um, Right on the Wall has, this song has. No. It? Oh, for definite. And it's funny you said that about clairvoyant. This almost does sound like that sort of period I and mean, then seven yeah, sun sort of period bit, as bit. those touches anyway not exactly but yeah, it definitely has those touches um i was going to say about the guitar solo now what do you think of the guitar solo itself i think i think it might be yannick because he's co-writing this with steve harris now i've only obviously we've only listened to the guitar solo a couple of times but my problem with Iron Maiden guitar solos, uh, sorry, I was going to let you have a little word first, but I, I, but um, it's just, um, I, I don't find them memorable anymore as much as I used to. <laughs> yeah. I just find yeah. them a little bit jammy, just like, yeah, they, very, they sound very similar to other solos they're doing throughout other songs, and I don't find any melody sticking out at me like they used to. I don't know about you. That, that, yeah, I mean, I was just about to laugh when he said to talk to me, but good to get me to talk about the guitar sound. I thought, oh, I haven't written anything down. That just goes to show that it wasn't anything mm. to talk about. There's nothing yeah. wrong with it. But, no. you know, you've got three guitarists in there. I expect, you know, you, you, want, you want something perhaps, you know, individual from each bit, some sort of, yeah, it must be hard. There's, there's lots of lots of creative minds in there. But, yeah, mm. it's certainly a good guitar sound. It's, not, it's certainly not. Yeah, I mean, I listen to it. Yeah. You're totally right. I mean, it's good memorable not so much good yeah and it's difficult when you only listen to saying three or four times and, and i always say we sort of talk about how much music there is now and you don't get to listen to music constantly like the same album for weeks on end so we get it's ingrained no. on your brain that don't really happen anymore but um i just i wish the guitar sound cut through more as well it, there's, there's something about the the, the actual sound of the guitars that are made and when they solo, it don't, ain't prominent enough. It sounds a bit bassy, not trebly enough, and it doesn't cut through. But that's just a, I'm just nitpicking a little bit. I actually yeah. really like the song. Uh, I, I think both of them, and I've, I'm like you, the other one's grown on me as well, writing on the wall. I liked it to begin with, but it's grown without a doubt. And, and, and this really does feel like a, to me, whether they meant it or not, a bit of an answer to writing on the wall, saying, look, we're still here, we're still Maiden, here's the gallop, if that's what you're missing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I think we're still going to get those, looking at, like you said, looking at those nine-minute you know, songs yeah. that are on this album, you're probably going to get those proggy, repetitive choruses. You are going to get them, I think. You might not, but... no. It'd be interesting to see what track one is. I mean, we've had this is track two, so this is upbeat. Track three, obviously, slightly different writing on the wall. So I don't know where they're going to go. Going to go with another upbeat. So you thought, you know, upbeat 
track like this would have been track one, possibly. I mean, they might go X Factor way. You know, we were talking about it the other day, weren't the X Factor is really slow intro to to the to an album, um, but still a great song. And they might go that way with track one. I guess we'll wait. So I don't think it's particularly long track one, is it? I don't think it's an epic opening. I think it might only be six, seven minutes, maybe maybe shorter than that. So so that would be interesting. It's funny, it's funny though, isn't it? When we talk about six or seven minutes, it's quite short. That's what it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. <laughs> well, if it's anything like the track. Book of Souls, you know, the opening track there, I'll be happy if Eternity should fail in that song. So that's yeah. that was a great song. A long song, I think, as well. That yeah, one. about but, eight minutes. About eight minutes. But it was sort of upbeat. It was, I sort of, it was a, for me, it was one of the best tracks they've done for a while as the opening track. But, yeah, we, it's a bit of an unknown, isn't it, this Maiden album? They've, they've, well, they've I, I really liked um, Satellite 15, The Final Frontier as an opening track, which is a bit like The X Factor, where it started off all slowly and did all that, that mm. repetitive stuff. I, I really like that one, actually. Mm. And then it goes into El Dorado. I thought that was a good two-track two, two track, uh, intro mm. as well. But, uh, yes, we'll see what this one's like. Exactly. So, anything else on the track, mate? So, big big news, isn't it, really? I mean, two it tracks is, yeah. So, I like the drum outro. That was good as well. I like that yeah. bit. That was yeah. good close to the song. No, so, I mean, I'm happy with what I've heard, heard, heard so far. I was quite happy with Book of Souls, to tell you the truth, for, for, most, for the most part. Um, yeah. I mean, the Book of Souls, I really was blown away at first, more than I was over time, if that makes yeah. sense. I think it, I, I was listening to it pretty constantly and, you know, loving the fact that there was like a half hour track and all that. It blew me away a little bit at the beginning. But I think it sort of, I don't know, it sort of wore off quite quickly but yeah. I still I still don't see it as a weak album for it's a good album no. but I'm really interested to see obviously uh what we're going to get coming on this one so all right then mate well thanks for joining me um, no problem and uh it's always interesting when Maiden comes out with that because it ain't often <laughs> <laughs> every five or six years whatever it is so yeah, all right then mate oh we, we haven't mentioned one thing Bruce <laughs> Yes. So uh, he's got a sort of a tone to his voice. Yeah. Uh, that I'm enjoying actually. He sounds a bit different. And yeah, I mean, it, it might it might be the surgery that yeah. he, he had. Um yeah. but it's not um, that's not in a negative way. I, I think there's something about his voice that sounds slightly different. It's like a tone, which is quite a nice tone, which I think I said on the last one. Um and he doesn't seem to be stretching. Which is a good thing. I mean, trying to hit those heights. But well, now he's blimming, you know, God knows how old he is. He's not trying to do things that maybe he can't do and he won't be able to do live. So I like that, the fact that he limits himself. And well, obviously, when he goes out on the road and they start maybe doing some of these songs, uh, I think he had a, he was a great vocal on here. He had a really good tone yeah. to his voice. So I don't know if it's the way it's been recorded, the sound of it, or if he's its actual tone itself. I'm not sure. But it's good. No, I mean, it sounds good, doesn't it? But I mean, it does definitely sound different. But I think it, it's definitely got to do with what you know is uh, cancer or whatever he had, because um, he does sound different when you hear him in interview. And I saw him on the spoken word tour a couple of weeks ago, and um, he does sound different speaking. But I mean, that happens with age anyway, as well, of course. Mm -hmm. But he definitely does sound better. I think he, but I don't let that put anyone off. His singing's still brilliant. It just no, sounds yeah. slightly different, doesn't it? Just it, it does, just a little bit. His tone yeah. sounds are slightly different, and but it's ain't nice about it. Um, yeah, yeah, right, it's good. Anyway, well, thanks, then, mate. We we nearly went without talking about Bruce. No, oh, shit. It. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for joining me yet again, mate. And um, right. obviously, anyone watching this video, let us know what you think. I'm sure you will in the comments below. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>